Wow, what exactly is going on with this battery? I was given this battery from Mike, thank you so much for that, because he did not like the look of it for using in his own setup, and I don't blame him. Look at this expansion down here. So we are gonna take this apart and find out exactly what's going on. Thank you, Mike, for uh, giving me your broken battery, and we're gonna take it apart and see what's going on. Now, both of these batteries are out of Chevy Volts. Uh, this is a Gen 1, and mine's a Gen 2. This is a 2 kilowatt hour battery, and mine's a 2.3 kilowatt hour battery. And as we can see, there's quite a bit of expansion. So let's get the camera down in here nice and close and take a look. You can see those silver packs inside there have expanded so I'm guessing those are gonna wind up being bad and something else that's interesting when you look up here uh, this is the port where the BMS attaches and the wires are hidden underneath and also when you look at these silver tabs there are three pouch cells on every bus bar those two things are different compared to the generation 2 all the BMS leads are actually sitting on top, and there are two pouch cells for every bus bar. This is still an, uh, an excellent pack. I mean, if you guys get a chance to buy these uh, Generation 1, I mean, they are still an excellent battery, and they can usually get, be picked up for cheaper than the Generation 2, uh, which makes them a better deal per kilowatt hour. But excellent, excellent batteries. Uh, even being a little bit older. Now, exactly how do I take this apart? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> if we take a look at the full pack all the way across from lead to lead, we have 38.9 volts. So we still have voltage going on. And uh, let's go ahead and check the first cell group over here is 2.37. And then the second cell group, 2.38, 2.46. 3.52, big difference there. Okay. 3.52, all right, so it looks like several of these cells are still good at 3.52, and then 2.46. So this is where the bad cells begin, is right here at this group. So that means we're gonna wanna cut it right here. Drew a dotted line there in the Sharpie. I know it's, it's all black on black, so. But that is going to be the point where I'm going to try to cut. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cell groups that are good. Well, looks like I'm still hanging on by a hair. You can actually see the little copper leads in there that I was cutting through. Chevy embedded the copper uh, wires for the BMS. Looks like I finally broke through with the Dremel tool. Here we go. Check that out, huh? Wow. This, uh, that's just shavings from my stuff. LG XP150. What a bad idea this is, if you are thinking about doing it yourself. Uh, even with me taking quite a long time to do this, I still uh, nicked the tab of the pouch. Now over here in the middle, you can actually see where these copper leads are embedded in the plastic, and that's for the BMS. That's quite a bit different. You can see they just had a printed circuit board. Now on this side, this is where the coolant flows and it actually flows up and over this plate. Look at that. But look how itty bitty those tiny fins are, those tubes. So it looks like there's air in this top one. Air in this bottom one.
Alright, got the steel plate off. Okay, I might be able to reuse this for the other side, hopefully. Looks like we then have a piece of plastic. Okay. This plastic has double-sided tape uh, to the pouch. Well, I don't know guys, I mean, look at look at all that air in there. It doesn't look like a catastrophic failure, but it does look like uh, all these cells were low compared to the rest of them. Well, personally, I think this battery is just shot and should be recycled. Uh, it is currently at 7.3 volts for the whole thing, and each cell is at 2.48. All right, so let's see what happens when we hook this up. Uh, we might get lots and lots of sparks, probably, but it'll be fun. I was hoping for some explosion or something. No amps. 7.49, so it did draw this down. Oh, so it drew this battery right down until it died. Well, I don't know, we might have to get more aggressive with this. This one has 12.84. Yeah, so there's finally a spark, so it's gonna move something. It's drawing 40 amps right now. 32.4 amps, and it keeps dropping pretty steadily. This did not work yesterday, so I recharged this battery uh, overnight. And let's give it another shot, 13.36, and this one is at 10.99. There we go. Okay, it's been on for about two minutes. Let's see what our amps are, 16.8, hasn't exploded yet. As you can see, this battery did not blow up. The pouches still feel the same. They're a little bit puffy, uh, just like they were before, but it doesn't look like it got any worse. I went ahead and charged this battery all the way up. Let's see what the voltage is right now. And it shows that we have 12.66. All right, now I charged this uh, a week ago and I left it sitting here just to see if it would self-drain, but it's still doing just fine. Uh, now this is actually a little bit overcharged. So 4.2 volts per cell would be 12.6, uh, but it's 12.66 for the total pack. And I went just that little bit extra uh, just because I wanted to see if it was, you know, right on the edge of blowing up or whatever. Let's see what each cell is doing. So the first cell is 4.21, 4.21, 4.22. In a previous video, I made this little tester. It's just a, a watt meter with an inverter on it for 12 volts. And the idea here is that we can now record what our uh, watt hours are that we draw from the battery. Let's connect it up and here we go. Let's go ahead and reset this. go back to zero watt hours so it looks like we are at a hundred and four watts I wanted to hit a hundred watts so that this won't take forever we had a little bit of sag 12.43 volts right now I'm gonna stop at somewhere around 10 and a half or 10 volts, whatever this stops at. We're gonna find out how bad they are. So I'm kind of expecting these batteries to die really quick because they were uh, drawn down so far and damaged. They're a little bit puffy. But we're gonna find out. 50 watt hours so far, 12.07 volts.
The system is currently in default and shut itself off, so I'll turn that off. It probably hit 10 volts and shut itself off. The battery is now bounced back up to 10.33 volts. And check that out, we've used 473 watt hours out of this battery. So the, the battery itself doesn't seem damaged. It took about five hours to do the test and it turned out that we had 473 watt hours of capacity running the cells from 4.21 volts per cell down to 3.33 volts per cell. And I'm super impressed. That is way more than I thought we were gonna get out of a damaged battery. That's right in line with factory specs, I, I believe. Now, it still has a lot of expansion and play in these cells, and I would never recommend that somebody use a pack like this because, you know, it, to me, there's just never knowing when this is gonna go at this point. Uh, so I will not use this inside my garage in my DIY power wall, but maybe some other kind of application this could still be used for because obviously it's still holding some kind of capacity. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed getting to test this battery out. Thank you very much for checking out the channel. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.